Bulldog Rock Tree has been competing in IRAC since 2018, and we are excited to be back again this year to compete virtually in the 2021 Spaceport America Cup. This year, our club consists of nearly 30 active members and seven different majors from the University of Minnesota Duluth. Our university faculty advisor is Jose Carrillo, and our level three Triple E mentor is Dave Weininger. This year's rocket is named the North Star as we represent Northern Minnesota. Its overall length is just under 14 feet and it is six inches in diameter. We pride ourselves in having every component of this rocket, besides the COTS recovery electronics, designed and manufactured solely by us students. This includes the hybrid aluminum and composite airframe, the main and experimental drogue parachutes, the O-class solid rocket motor, and the CubeSat payload featuring an airbag deployment system that absorbs the shock of impact when hitting the ground. The rocket also features a dual separation for the drogue and main parachute utilizing a strata logger and Mars A33L for redundancy. Our club is broken into seven main committees, including the motor, airframe, electronics, recovery, documentation, simulation, and payload committee, each being led by a committee lead. Going forward, we will dive a bit deeper into a few of these committees to learn more about our different manufacturing methods and design elements. For the rocket this year, we stuck with the same design and shape of last year's nose cone, uh, being 36 inches tall and a three-quarter power series. It also has the same diameter as the rest of the rocket. We manufacture the nose cone in-house using a 3D printed mold we got from a company called Stratasys. We are in charge of making the nose cone from beginning to end, so we are in total control of the quality of it, meaning we can smooth it out as much as we want, and we can ensure that there aren't any major defects on the surface finish. We created a nose cone last year, but due to the circumstances, we did not have a competition. So as a club, we decided to use that nose cone for destructive testing. And with this knowledge, we decided to change the epoxy to fiberglass ratio of the nose cone to improve the strength under load. Our rocket was comprised of 6061 T6 aluminum for the majority of the lower section. This included the motor tube, the fins, the nozzle, and the couplers between each sections, the two carbon fiber sections encapsulating the fiberglass on each end. The carbon fiber sections of our rocket were made using a 6 12K weave with the 12K strands of our fiber running along the axis of the rocket to ensure that it maintained enough strength and rigidity when the rocket was undergoing a bending moment. We used a 60 to 40 resin to fiber ratio to ensure that enough of the fiber was thoroughly coated to ensure that no dry spots would happen. However, we did scrape and use enough compression to ensure that there wasn't too much resin such that there would be no pockets of just resin leading to deformations. The fiberglass electronics bay was made using two separate weave patterns, a 12K unidirectional weave and a 6K bidirectional. We did five layers of the bidirectional weave, then two layers of the unidirectional weave with the majority of the fibers running along the axis to again maintain strength and rigidity under a bending moment, and then an additional five layers of the bidirectional weave. This weave pattern was chosen to ensure that we maintained the proper thickness and strength to weight ratios of the electronics bay. Fiberglass was chosen over carbon fiber to ensure that there would be no signal interruption between the electronics on board and the ground electronics that would happen if you used carbon fiber. The payload contains a four unit aluminum QTAP frame that has a deployable airbag that will cushion the frame on impact. This is meant to reduce the forces experienced by the airbag, which will be measured with an accelerometer on the payload itself.
We'll be looking for an acceleration under six times the acceleration of gravity, a value that we consider survivable for a short period of time. The payload will deploy from the rocket at Apogee while connected to the shock cord of the drogue chute. It's going to be pulled out of the carbon fiber and fall with the rocket until approximately 4,000 feet, where it will detach and fall until 2,000 feet, which is when its own 46-inch elliptical-style parachute will be deployed to stabilize it. It will fall at around 25 feet per second until the airbags inflate with a 25 gram CO2 charge. Once the payload lands, it will have a cell phone as well as the Big Red B 70 centimeter APRS GPS tracker, which will allow the team to track it and find it and recover it. Our motor is student research and developed. We use a solid Bates grain, which stands for Ballistic Test and Evaluation System. It's a four grain motor with a highly aluminized ammonium perchlorate propellant, and we use R45 HTPB as our main binding agent. Our motor is classified as an 89.26 O-Class motor, which has a total impulse of about 37,000 newton seconds. The average thrust is about 802 pounds, and the burn time was just over 11 seconds. We poured the test motor in mid-February, where I mainly took notes to work on creating the SOP for the motor with special attention to safety and small details that would make the process go a little bit smoother in the future. Uh, while we were doing that, we also experimented with adding different metals to the propellant to see how it affected the burn rate and then assembled it in mid-March and tested it in mid-April where we placed the rocket tube upside down on the load cell that measures force and ignited it to get to see our rocket in action and collect data. The resulting thrust curve was exactly how we wanted it to be, which was a long neutral burn. The rocket utilizes four main electronics on it. Two of these systems are our pyro channels, which are used for deploying the main and drogue parachutes, as well as the payload. These two systems are the Marza 33L and the Stratolager CF. The other two electronics that the rocket uses are used for tracking the rocket once it is landed. These are the Featherlight GPS system, which utilizes APRS tracking, as well as the Kate Multitronics Pro telemetry system. The simulation committee uses OpenRocket as their simulation software. Through OpenRocket, we're able to update, refine, and iterate over our model to ensure that we get 30,000 feet. Our current model has us reaching 29,955 feet at peak apogee. Due to this rocket's dual separation setup, the recovery team has put together two parachutes. The first parachute 
being the drogue parachute, which will be deployed at Apogee along with the payload. This parachute is a six foot diameter experimental elliptical design with a descent rate of 97 feet per second. The goal of this parachute is to stabilize the rocket in its initial descent. The second parachute is the main parachute, which will be deployed at 2,000 feet and will be fully open at 1,500 feet. This parachute is a 20 foot diameter cross-shaped design, which will have a descent rate of 21 feet per second. The goal of this parachute is to slow the descent rate until touchdown. Bulldog Rocktree, along with every other school here, has learned to cope with the challenges brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. And we appreciate everything that IREC and Spaceport has been able to do despite these challenges. A bit disappointed but understanding regarding this year's competition circumstances, Bulldog Rocktree is launching our rocket configured to reach a lower altitude in June out at Tripoli, Minnesota North Branch. Working together as a team, we have transferred knowledge to new and inspiring future engineers here at UMD. They plan to carry forward Bulldog Rock Tree success in the solid rocket motor category and, and hopefully many more Spaceport America Cups to come. I want to thank all those involved in making this year's virtual competition happen, including the many sponsors. I also want to wish each team good luck throughout this virtual competition and for any launches that teams are fortunate enough to participate in.